Think of a time in your life when you were overflowing with joy. For many people, it's at the birth of a child. That's definitely the case for me. Joy overflowed at the birth of each of my three sons. Every time I heard that first small cry, I was a mess, bawling my eyes out. I remember with my first son, I could hardly see his face for the first few minutes because I was wiping the tears from my eyes. Couldn't do it fast enough. The birth of a child is such a roller coaster of emotions. And of course, this is amplified for a mother. Months of anxiety and discomfort escalating toward the turmoil of labor and delivery are suddenly replaced with inexplicable joy and gratitude as the mother gazes into her child's face. As we enter week three of Advent, we will explore this concept, first as it relates to the joy of Christ's birth, then how it foreshadows the overflowing joy we will experience at Christ's return. Merry Christmas. My name is Nicole. This week, we celebrate the Advent of joy. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish, for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Today, I'd like to suggest to you that in order for joy to overflow, for you this Christmas, it must be connected to the source of Christmas, which is Christ. For joy to overflow, it must be connected to the source of joy. Having extensive knowledge of that very first Christmas will amplify your joy each and every Christmas. Understanding that the very word Christ Mass is based around a mass or gathering of people celebrating the birth of Christ. Understanding that is far more than just some nostalgic feeling of Christmas spirit. Throughout the account of Christ's birth, overflowing joy shows up again and again and again. First, when Mary visits Elizabeth. In Luke 1, 43 to 44, we read, And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Then, think about when the angels visited the shepherds, explained in Luke 2, 10 to 11. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Then, when the shepherds finally made it to Mary, we read about it in Luke 2, 19 to 20. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. Then, a couple of years later, the wise men finally make it. We read about that in Matthew 2, 10 and 11. It says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Even if you're fairly new to Christianity, you've likely heard some of this before in Christmas carols, maybe books or films, but you may not be aware of the trial and turmoil leading up to this event. For example, just the people of Israel, all God's people, he had been silent for 400 years, no prophets or messengers, and they had been under a heavy foreign occupation by the Roman Empire. It was hard times for all of God's people. Then think about Mary visiting Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth would give birth to John the Baptist, the foreshadowing prophet to the Christ, to Jesus. And she was an elderly woman. 
And, and yet, through a miracle, she would, became pregnant with John the Baptist. But that was very hard times for her for years, not being able to have children. Think about the shepherds. You may not know this much about shepherds, but they were actually the lowest rung on the pole of socioeconomic and status as a whole in the culture of Judeo people at that time. So for angels to show up to the lowly, to the shepherds, was crazy. These guys had a hard life. They, they weren't looked upon very well, and yet God saw fit to send angels to them. And then let's think about the wise men. We're talking about years of prophecy and studying the stars and seeking for the place, for the time when the God's son, the king of kings, the Lord of lords would, would come to this earth. And, and then they traveled for months facing danger and all sorts of other things that happened at that time when you had to travel. Many, many hard times. But now let's come to Mary. She faced incredible turmoil and lots of trials. She was an engaged teenager, a virgin that all of a sudden through God becomes miraculously pregnant. That's hard. That's hard news for her to take, then for her fiance, Joseph, to accept. And then all of a sudden there's this census and they have to travel while she's pregnant to this other city, to the city where their, their lineage had come from. There's just so much trial there before the moment where she gives birth to God's son, the Messiah, the Savior, the chosen one. You see, joy often overflows in a greater capacity out of trial and turmoil. Joy overflows out of trial and turmoil. And I get it. After hearing all of that, it might make sense to you why those people at that time in Scripture experienced overflowing joy, but maybe, again, you're new to Christianity and church and you're kind of thinking, wait a second, why do Christians keep celebrating? Why do they keep being overjoyed at Christ's birth? Why is Christmas still a big deal? Maybe you're asking yourself, why can't we just move on from this historic event and just have a fun family holiday without all the Christ component? The answer is that Christ's birth is a pointer to our rebirth. You see, Jesus would eventually be sacrificed on the cross for the sins of the world, but rose from the dead, overcoming sin and death. Then he ascended to heaven with the promise to return. Those of us who have placed our trust in Jesus have experienced a spiritual rebirth, receiving God's Holy Spirit. The birth of Christ is a reminder of our rebirth. And that we are now in the second holding pattern, navigating our age of trial and turmoil. Jesus spoke to his disciples about this time that we're in right now, between his first and second coming. We read about it in the Gospel of John, where Jesus said, When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. So if you have ever asked, why do Christians overflow with joy at Christmas? Why is it such a big deal for them? <laughs> or maybe, why do some Christians cling so tightly to Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays? Once again, it's because Christ's birth is a pointer to our rebirth into eternal life. Christmas is a celebratory reminder of Christ's first entrance into the world when God brought the miraculous into the tumultuous. But that's just half of it. His first appearance brings us great anticipation for his second coming. He will return at the end of our age of trial and turmoil. Joy will overflow when Christ returns. The miracle of that first Christmas is the reassurance to us of his miraculous return. After hearing all of that, perhaps you're thinking, 
I want that kind of joy this Christmas. Maybe you hear the words trial and turmoil and they describe your life. Maybe for you, you're heading into Christmas and you have no joy at all. I want you to think of your life like this cup of water. Now, there's a certain level of Christmas joy in it. I'm going to assume that. And maybe, you know, you'll try to fill it up on your own by giving and receiving gifts or attending parties and family gatherings. Maybe you'll sing some Christmas carols or to sing Christmas music on the radio. I don't know. There's dozens of other techniques to increase your joy this Christmas. And it might feel like it's working for a little while. It might even give you a level of nostalgia and, and that maybe mirrors itself as true joy, but it's fleeting because it's still just you trying to fill your own cup. For Christmas joy to overflow you must be connected to the source, which is Jesus Christ. For joy to overflow, you must be connected to the source. And without, and without a reconnection to the source, joy will get used up, on fleeting things, as I mentioned, or maybe you'll bottle it up and put a lid on it and become like a Scrooge to the point where you despise or reject the Christmas season. I don't know what it'll be like for you, but you need to connect to the source. Jesus needs to be pouring into you that, that the Christ who's alive and well, you need to allow him to pour into your life. So the question is, are you connected to the source of Christmas joy? If you want to be this year, right now is your moment to commit yourself to Jesus Christ. Maybe you've forgotten why Christmas brings joy overflowing in the first place. It's time to reconnect with him as your source of joy. If you would like to reconnect or connect for the first time to the Christ, the one who truly brings Christmas joy, joy overflowing, you can pray with me now. Dear Father, I thank you for this passage of scripture that we looked at today. Jesus speaking to his disciples about a very difficult time that a mother has giving birth and yet the overflowing joy she experiences when she sees that child. When we come to Christmas, we look at Jesus in the manger in our mind's eye and we are filled with joy because it points us to the return of our King, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move in people listening and watching right now and that you might convict them that chasing supposed Christmas spirit, Christmas joy will, will be a fleeting task that the joy overflowing of Christmas only comes from the Christ. Holy Spirit, convict them of that, and may they give their lives to Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross for us. We thank you for rising again and conquering our sin. We choose to believe and follow you, and we ask that you would redeem people once again today. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Before we go, I have a couple discussion questions for you at home, online, wherever you're at. Uh, the first one is, when was the last time you were overflowing with joy? For me, it's the birth of my three sons. That, that's like a key moment. But for you, I don't know what it is for you. Talk about it. Maybe mention it in the comment stream below. When were you overflowing with joy? When's the last time? And then the second question today is this year. How connected are you to the source of overflowing Christmas joy? How close are you to Christ in this moment as we approach drawing near to Christmas? Get connected to him. Make it the best Christmas ever. And make a plan to come back next week because Elijah, our pastoral apprentice, is going to be giving the message on our fourth advent, which is peace. Thanks so much.